Today we're reading Bedtime is Cancelled by C.C. Ming, illustrated by Aurelia Naret. The note read, Bedtime is Cancelled. Maggie thought of it. Her brother wrote it. Their parents read it. They didn't believe it. So into the trash it went. Until the wind got a hold of it. Up it flew, out the window, loop-de-loop, -loop, across town. Until finally it landed on the desk of a newspaper reporter, right on the pile of finished work. The newspaper printed it in big, bold, black letters. Bedtime is canceled. Everybody who read it believed it. Even Principal Nancy at Maggie's school believed it. And she was so surprised. She poured her Morgan coffee into her purse. She combed her hair with her toothbrush and dried her face with her calico cat. At school, Principal Nancy immediately sent a notice home to all the parents. The parents read it and were not happy about it. Some strongly disagreed with it. A television reporter received an urgent text about it and raced to the school where TV cameras filmed six parents throwing tantrums in the flower beds. Oh, Principal Nancy gave them a timeout. On TV, the newscaster announced it. News alert, bedtime is canceled. Everybody who watched it believed it. Well... Almost everybody. Emails were sent to friends to tell them about it, and the friends sent emails to their friends who sent emails to their friends who sent emails to their friends. The emails read, forward, you're not going to believe this. Bedtime is canceled. Oh, everybody read it, did believe it. By the end of the day, everybody knew about it. That night, when it was time for bed, there was no time for bed. Bedtime was canceled. Pajamas lay unworn in their drawers. Bathtubs stood empty. Teddy bears sat on nicely made beds. Forgotten? Well, almost forgotten. Kids played tag and hide and seek. They did some serious bed bouncing and wall climbing. Maggie's brother rescued her from the ceiling fan twice. TVs were left on, toys were left out, dishes from midnight snacks piled up and up. Everyone was sleepy, but no one went to sleep. Bedtime was canceled. The next morning, tired moms and dads were so busy yawning. Some of them buttered the dog's tail instead of the toast. Quite a few of them served scrambled pancakes instead of eggs. And 1,026 of them put on their pants backwards and inside out. Oh, everybody was too tired to notice. Well, almost everybody. In the school, Miss Claiborne couldn't remember the answer to one plus one. Mr. Jones got the ingredients mixed up in his science experiment and accidentally turned nine of his fingers green and the 10th one pink. Teachers were so busy napping, they let the kids out of school late, very late. This was noticed. At dinner, 56,000 parents fell asleep in their mashed potatoes. Everyone was too tired to care. The new note, oh, oh. The new note read, bedtime is not canceled. Maggie thought of it. Her brother wrote it. This time their parents believed it. 
Maggie personally delivered the note to the newspaper reporter. The newspaper printed a special edition in big, bold, black letters. Bedtime is not canceled. Principal Nancy read it and called all the parents. A television reporter heard about it and raced to the school, where TV cameras filmed happy parents doing some serious bed bouncing and pillow tossing. Whew. On TV, the newscaster announced it. Uh, news alert, bedtime is not canceled. Emails were sent out around the world and soon everybody knew about it. And that night, at bedtime, everybody went to bed. Well, almost everybody. Cleaning up bedrooms is not allowed. That's what they're writing. That's their new, their new note. That was a fun book. All right. Good night. I love you. <laughs>